Welcome to True 911 Calls. Five calls, all cases that could have been prevented. A mentor man claims he acted against his girlfriend in self-defense. A prank gone wrong is challenged by the victim's family. A rambling man claims he is being poisoned. An adoption ends in tragedy and one of the biggest cases to come out of Gaston. You don't want to miss these in-depth looks into the before, during, and after terrifying 911 calls, so make sure you subscribe. In a calm and collected call to 911 on Thursday, May 17, 2018, mentor resident Russell Fritz admitted to killing his girlfriend. Fritz surrendered immediately when police officers arrived at the scene, and the victim, 35-year-old Kristen Lau, was pronounced dead. On the day of the murder, the man was out playing darts with a friend at a bar. He came home in the early hours of the morning when a verbal altercation started between the couple. Fritz claimed that Lau bit him, provoking him to respond. After choking and punching the woman several times, she lost consciousness. Despite this, the accused went to their bedroom and took a knife out of the nightstand drawer. He stabbed Kristen Lau 13 times in the neck. Fritz was arrested and charged with aggravated murder. During his sentencing, the mentorman told the judge that the couple had a magical relationship and claimed the woman had a drinking problem. At the sentencing, Fritz recalled happy memories with his girlfriend before he told the court he couldn't help her anymore. According to the 38-year-old, the problem started around June 3, 2017, approximately 11 months before he killed her. Throughout Fritz's testimony, Judge John O'Donnell repeatedly questioned why he stayed with Lau since he spoke of an unbearable relationship, riddled with suicide threats and addiction. The sentencing was more than an hour long, including statements from both families. 
Fritz's family called him soft, compassionate, and trapped in a cycle. However, the victim's family pleaded for a maximum sentence. Lau's mother left the courtroom devastated after sharing her testimony. Ultimately, due to the degree of the incident and the number of stab wounds inflicted, Russell Fritz was sentenced to life in prison with $12,000 in restitution. He has no chance of parole. Kristen Lau's obituary says she will always be remembered for her beautiful smile and loving soul. Michael B. Lancaster could barely speak to the operator when he called 911 in February 2016. Olivia Stoll. Lancaster said he didn't know the gun was loaded. Nine one one. What's the address of your emergency? Um, um, uh, um, um, uh, Ruth Willard, Brooklyn, Ohio. Okay, you got to tell me that address again. And I can't understand you. Um, uh, eight six Ruth Willard. Okay, you got a single house or an apartment? It's an apartment. I need to stop. I need to go fast. Please. What, what Please. apartment? Turn your head sideways. Turn your head sideways. What? All right. What apartment are you in? I'm in apartment two. Okay, and what's going on? I, 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 have, a, I have a gun and I, I didn't know that it was loaded and I shot it and it pointed at my friend. You shot your friend? Please, I need to okay, come so on. bad. Oh, please, please, come quick. Please come quick. I can't hold this. I can't hold this. How old is she? It's not that much more she's bringing. But where, did you, where did you shoot her at? What? Where did you shoot her at? Like in the lower, uh, upper chest. No, no like, uh, like right under her boobs. In her chest? Yes. Yes, breathe. Okay, is she breathing? Breathe, listen to my voice. Yes. She's okay. breathing. Just keep right. breathing. She just stopped breathing. She just stopped breathing. What do I do? Okay, okay, hold on. You're with her right now? Is she yes. How old is she? She's 18. 18? She's 18. Listen to me. Stay with okay. me. Breathe. Breathe. Right. Focus on awake? breathing. Is she awake? Yes, I see, I see her eyes. Focus on breathing. Focus okay. on breathing, okay? Is she breathing? Yes, she's still breathing right now. Please, there. I need help so bad. I need okay, help so right. bad. Got him on the way there. Okay, hold on. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, that's all right. Okay. I'm going to go to jail. I just need you to save her. Okay, it's all right. <sighs> Please hurry, please hurry, Sorry, please where's hurry. Where's the bleeding? Is it, is it serious bleeding right now? It's, no, it's not bleeding really bad. I don't know if she's put on her back. I can't see her back. Okay. There's some blood coming from her back, though. It's, it looks like a through and through, though. Okay, through and through? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, do you please only shoot her focus once? Focus on breathing. Focus on breathing. What? Did, is she only shot her head back. Yes. Okay. Should I flip her over? I don't know. Oh, no, keep no. Your tongue, just... Keep your mouth open. Okay. Focus on breathing. Make sure on the way, okay? Focus on... All right. Come on. I need them now. I need them now. They need okay, to come here now. To, I'm going to tell you to try and stop, tell you how to try and stop the bleeding, okay? I have my hand over it, but there's not really much coming from the front. Okay. Is it it's more on the back? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Do you have a, a clean towel? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Should I put it under her? Okay, I just want you to press down firmly on the wound, okay? On the top of it? If it's coming more from the back, then try and put it underneath her. If you okay. can, like, slide okay. her to the side and put it underneath. Okay, hey, hey, focus on breathing. Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. Is she still responding I'm here for to you? you? Huh? Is she talking to you? No, she's, like, gargling a little. Where's the gun at right now? I don't know, on the bed somewhere, I think. I didn't really touch anything. I was just trying to help her. <sighs> okay. All right. Is she breathing? No. She, she's with slow, slow breath. Very slow breath. Lots of time in between them. Okay. All right. I want you to lay her flat on her back, okay? She is flat on her back. She okay. Is... All right. Can you tell... Olivia, listen to me. Breathe. All right. I'm, the she, paramedic, she sounds like she's got like water in her mouth or something. Okay, like she might be like like she's choking on the blood. Yeah, she kind of like threw up though. So I mean, there's no blood coming out of her mouth, but it looks like she threw up. Okay. Stay with me, Olivia. Right, Stay with okay. me. Okay. Can you clean out her mouth and nose? Do you have another towel you can just try and clean it out? I'm trying. I'm trying. 
Uh, I think I hear them. Oh, yeah, they, I'll let you, you tell me when they're right with you, okay? Hey, breathe, breathe, breathe. What, what's your name? Uh, my name's Michael. Michael, oh, what's she, your... She's not breathing anymore. She's not breathing? She's not breathing anymore. She's not breathing anymore. Okay, can you, all right, tilt her head back, okay? To the side. Oh, that, of course, I... I can, I'm in. I'm the front. I'm the back. What do I do? I'm in. I'm right here. The 18-year-old victim was taken to hospital but was pronounced dead soon after. Meanwhile, the shooter was taken into custody and charged with murder, felonious assault, reckless homicide, involuntary manslaughter, and aggravated menacing in the killing of Olivia Stoll. His lawyer said he was under suicide watch while in custody and needed to be released on bail. Speaking of the tragic day, their neighbor, Robert Sedal, said Lancaster had recently moved in and he had never seen a woman at the apartment. Sedal's wife had reportedly heard more than one gunshot, originally thinking they'd drop furniture. While describing the crime scene, he said they only realized what had happened when police rushed the building. The neighbor recalled how emergency crews took the victim outside the apartment and tried to save her life while the accused was on his knees screaming that he was sorry and didn't mean to shoot her. The gunfire appeared to be a prank gone wrong, with Lancaster's attorney painting the two out to be a loving young couple. Defense attorney Stephen McGowan told Parma Municipal Court that the pair had not been fighting, drinking, or taking drugs. He claims that they were about to paint a room together when Lancaster put the gun against Stull's back and pulled the trigger. Expecting it to make a clicking sound, he had taken out the gun's magazine but left a bullet in the chamber. However, in a shocking turn of events, the victim's family vehemently denied the relationship and was adamant the shooting was no accident. The teen's mother, Sarah Jordan Stoll, said they never even lived together. She also accused Lancaster of only thinking of himself by not taking a plea deal at the beginning of the case. Barely able to speak during the sentencing, Jordan Stoll addressed her daughter's killer. I was only 18 for a short time before she had a life taken from her. She grew up being an artist and a preschool teacher because she loved little children. I never expected that she would die so young or that the person who took the life would be so much you. I never thought anyone that knew of you would ever think of hurting her. Before the judge handed down the sentence, the Brooklyn man reiterated that he never meant for the incident to happen. Fighting back the tears, he told the courtroom he was truly sorry. After pleading guilty to reckless homicide, Lancaster was sentenced to three years and nine months in prison. He will also have three years of probation after being released. While handing down the sentence, Common Pleas Judge Dick Ambrose referred to the killer's attempt to scare 18-year-old Olivia Stull as stupid and idiotic. Although the Stull family had a GoFundMe page live after the teen's death, it has since been closed and has no updates. In June 2015, Isaiah Vizi told a 911 dispatcher in a scattered call that he had stabbed his great aunt to death in her home. He refers to himself as Abdul Aziz. When officers arrived at the Edisto Drive home around 9 a.m., they found the 25-year-old on the porch and still on the phone with dispatchers. Orange Park County 911. Hi, this is the Emergency Call Relay Center for Time Warner Cable Void Phone. Transferring a 911 caller from 2117 Old Edisto Drive in Orangeburg. Uh-huh. Give me the caller's name and phone number. It's Abdullah Aziz. How do you spell that? I'm assuming A-B-D-U-L-L-A-H, A-Z-I-Z. A-Z-I-Z? Mm -hmm. Phone number 803. Time Warner Cable. And just to warn you, he's, he's notified me that he's murdered his great aunt and she's dead on the floor, so I'll bring him on the line. All right. Sir, go ahead. Hello. Hello? Yeah. What's going on? Um, I, I murdered my great aunt. Oh, I'm on uh, 2117 Old Edison Drive. 2117 Old Edison Drive? 2117 Old Edison Drive. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, hello? Okay, what's your name? My name is Adula Z. Oh. 
Okay, uh, I didn't speak with you before, so um, down a notch. What did, you, what did you say? Okay, I didn't speak with you before, so I don't know this information. What exactly is going on, sir? How old are you? I'm uh, 27. You're 27? I'm 27 years old. Okay, what exactly is going on? My great aunt is dead. I murdered her. She's on the floor. She on the floor. She gone. Okay, uh, and and how exactly did you do this? Uh, I used the knife. The knife is inside the kitchen, and it's sitting inside the the dish bowl. It's inside the sink. Okay, and where and where did you uh -uh. suppose? Where did you suppose? You said this is your aunt. My great aunt. Okay, so you stabbed your great aunt. Where did you stab her at? In her room. In her, in the room? In her room. Yeah, we, we got some. Um, I couldn't uh, see. Sir, okay, you said it was your great aunt. You stabbed her in her room this morning? Yeah, about like. Where, where on her did you stab her at? In her chest. In, in her, her chest? In her chest and her? In her heart. Okay, where did you stab her at? In her heart, toward the body. Like you said in her what? Like Twenty times. No, okay. You stabbed her where? In the heart. In, in her heart. heart? Okay, in her heart? And toward the uh the abdomen in the torso. In the torso. Okay, in her heart and in her back? Her her front. The, the her chest cavity, her heart, and her stomach. Chest, stomach, and what else? Um, and you said in the I mean, back? That's all. Okay, and you said how many times? I mean, in her arm. She was in, she kept trying, she, she moved her hand. Okay, and how many times? About like, about 20 times. More okay, less. and why And why did you do this? Yasin, Yasai. Why did you do, I speak English. Why did you I do know, it? I know, I'm going to say it again. Yeah, I see, yeah, see. Okay, speak of the English. I don't understand what you're yeah, saying. I just say Arabic, Baba. I'm not about to say no more than that. You just need to okay, say Okay, all right, what, what's uh -uh. your name? I'm sitting on the porch. I got a red cap on. And I got a, a, a red shirt on. Uh, okay, I got on wait, light sir, shoes, sir. I got tennis shoes. I got sir, shades on. Sir, we yeah. have the officer on the way or what have you. All right, Baba. Is, what it, what, is what it a house mean? or a trailer? That was going on out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Young brothers can't get supplication. Sisters can't find a brother that don't, you know what I'm saying, that don't want, he don't want to toil the land no more. You know what I'm saying? Everybody sitting on their ass. United States is looking so bad and slum. The trade market down Galilee look worse than ever. Nobody heard about it in Jetty. You know what I'm talking about? It's horrifying. It's scaring me. And I'm a do like And I don't like it. And I'm about to sit on the porch for I don't want to look. Let me turn this radio off. What's up out here? I mean, it's it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody out here. I'm from Washington D.C. I'm from Jetty. I do the trade down Galilee. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see. Yeah, see. You know what I'm saying? I come through with all this spirit, right? Holy source, Holy Spirit, and everybody learn. Fake bishops at the church, fake bishops up the street. You know what I'm saying? We got all these illegal aliens in our land. I'm like, I ain't got nothing against no Hispanic. I ain't got nothing against no black, white, Puerto Rican. What the fuck is y'all doing? I'm a young from the rural environment in Washington, D.C., over Southeast. And if I can make it educationally, you know what I'm saying? Why the fuck can't young shorty do it? Oh, young shorty do it. Where the men at? Where the ladies at? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Where the masons at? I'm not out here in the street. This is doing nothing with their time. It's up. Are you listening? I'm letting you. I'm listening to what you say. I know, I know, I know, I know. But, I mean, it's messed up. I mean, what What else was I supposed to do? I can't receive supplication. You know what I'm saying? Supplication. They got, they got people. They got people doing all sorts of mischief, right? You know what I'm saying? Everybody do good and evil, but. What did your aunt I mean, do? when is it going to be time to reap what you sow in these streets? Uh, Abdul. You know what, what, what did no, your great aunt do? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not right. Okay. What did your great aunt do, though? You said, what's she, what? What did she do to deserve to be stabbed? 
I mean, what did she not do? I mean, I'm a brother from Washington, D.C. traveled all the way down to South Carolina. I can't get no breakfast in the morning. Huh? I can't get no, I can't get you to go into the storehouse and get the gold and silver out. Huh? The crew oil. Huh? I can't get you to get the loaves out, the fish out. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Take your ass up the street like you've been doing every day. I asked you, do you know what the storehouse is? you like 75. I'm like, come on. How come you saying you don't know what a storehouse is? You bring your sisters over. You poison the food every day. I've been down here for a year, and I ain't said nothing. She poisoned my food. But I'm already sitting on Miyagi. You know what I mean? So why the You know what I'm saying? And it's, I'm at the house where the office is at right now. You at the house where the office is at? Yeah. I'm on the porch. Okay. Well, what you wear so I can make sure they I'm um, at the right spot? They're at the house right now, and they got the, the black and the white out. They yin yang. They... I mean, I'm here. You know what I'm talking about? All right, well, I might have just... I'm... Okay, you're gonna, you gonna go ahead and tell them what you told me? Hello? In addition to VZ telling the dispatcher he stabbed his great aunt, Della Reese Dash, he confessed to deputies while he was being read his Miranda rights. He said he had stabbed her about an hour before he made the 911 call. According to investigators, the 74-year-old's body was wrapped in bedsheets in her bedroom. The victim's son says VZ moved in eight months before the stabbing, and for six months, they were telling her to kick him out. Another family member said although VZ has a mental illness, he knew what he was doing. Dash's neighbors described the elderly lady as nice and spunky, saying she kept to herself. One of them, Tasha Ford, didn't expect her to have any enemies because she would do anything for anyone. Ford's five-year-old son, TJ, was struggling to come to terms with her sudden death. To date, the events of the seemingly senseless killing are still unclear, as is the motive. VZ was charged with murder, but the outcome of the case has not been published. Only two weeks after Matthew Scully Hicks and his husband Craig formally adopted 18-month-old Elsie Hicks, he made a call to 999 because the little girl was unresponsive. Police and paramedics arrived at his Cardiff home just before 6.30 p.m. in May 2016 and found Elsie not breathing with no pulse. However, what first appeared to be an accident later turned into a complex murder trial. Ambulance. Ambulance, thank you. Welsh Ambulance Service, please hold. Come on. Hold the line, please. We're held in a queue waiting for ambulance. Yeah. Okay. Welsh Ambulance Service. Please hold. Yeah, very busy. I'll get you through as quick as I can. Okay. Still trying to get you through. Welsh ambulance. So she, you need to hurry up. Please My daughter's hold. not breathing. Craig, I've got a critical call. Welsh Ambulance Service, please hold. Ambulance Service, what's the full address of the emergency? Can you please repeat the full address to confirm. Please now confirm the telephone number you're calling from. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. I was just changing my daughter for bed and then she went all floppy and limp and now she's just not, she's not doing anything. She's lying on the floor. Okay, you with her now, sir? I am. How old's your daughter? Um, she's 18 months. Okay, is she awake? No. Is she breathing? No. Okay, you right by her now? Yep, I'm trying to do CPR. Okay, listen carefully now. I'm organising the help for you now. If you stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next, okay? Okay. So listen carefully, lay her flat on her back on the yep. floor and remove any pillows. Yeah. Now kneel next to her and look in the mouth for any food or vomit. Is there anything in her mouth? No, it's okay. 
Okay, now place your hand on her forehead. You have a hand under her neck, then carefully tilt the head back. Yeah. And put your ear next to her mouth. Can you feel or hear any breathing? She's just took a breath in, but it's, she's not breathing out. Right, look at her very closely. I want you to say now, every she's single just time, out. she takes a breath in, starting immediately. First breath. No breath. Nothing? No. Okay. Listen carefully, okay? I'm going to tell you how to give mouth to mouth. With her head carefully tilted back, pinch her nose closed and completely cover her mouth with your mouth. Then blow two regular breaths into the lungs, about one second each, just enough to make the chest rise with each breath. All right, so do those two breaths for me now. Yep. All right, tell me when you're done. Done. Did you feel the air going in and out? Yeah, I saw the chest go up. Okay, listen carefully and I'll tell you how to do resuscitation. Make sure she is flat on her back on the floor. Yeah. All right, place the heel of your hand on the breastbone in the centre of the chest right between the nipples. Yeah. Push down about two inches with only the heel of one hand touching the chest. Pump the chest hard and fast 30 times, at least twice per second and let the chest come all the way up between pumps. Tell me when you're done. Yes. Okay, at this pace. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. She just took a breath in. Okay, and she's taken a breath. Just like we did before, I want you to say now, every single time she takes a breath in, starting immediately. First breath. No. Okay, pump the chest then, like I gave you those instructions at this pace. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Count out loud so I can count with One, you. One, two, three, four. One, One two, two, three, four. four. One, two, two three, three, four. four. Keep going. One, two, three, four. One, two, okay. three, four. Okay, that's your 30. Now with your hand under her neck, pinch yeah. her nose closed and carefully her head back again. Yeah. Give two more regular breaths, then pump the chest 30 more times. Make sure the heel of your hand is on the breastbone in the centre of the chest, right between the nipples. Do you understand? Yep. So from now on, give her two breaths, then 30 pumps, two breaths, then 30 pumps. Keep doing it until help can take over. All right, tell me when they're right with her, and if anything changes, tell me immediately, okay? Mm-hmm. God. That's right. Okay, have you done two breaths and 30 pumps? Yep. Telling me what you're doing. Oh, no, okay. Breath. The child was rushed to the hospital, but her injuries were so severe that she died four days later. Fitness instructor and adoptive parent Matthew Scully Hicks was charged with her murder. The 31-year-old told police that Elsie had been fine throughout the day. She had been to her playgroup and had eaten at home. The father said he was changing the child's nappy on the rug in the living room and had then taken her clothes and dirty nappy out of the room. On returning a few minutes later, the 18-month-old was unresponsive. Experts brought in during the trial observed inconsistencies with the statement. Two separate pediatricians agreed that the injuries indicated severe trauma. The first, Dr. Stephen Rose, said it was likely that Elsie Scully Hicks had been shaken violently and possibly knocked against a wall or a hard floor. The second, consultant pediatrician Dr. Marion McGowan, believed the injuries were all part of the singular event and agreed that the child had suffered significant trauma. Neither statement seemed far-fetched once previous suspicious injuries were brought to court. In fact, the Chief of Social Services apologized for missing injuries inflicted on the little girl in the year-long assessment before she was killed, including a large bruise on her face and an upper leg fracture. On top of that, Scully Hicks called 999 about the child just months before. My daughter's fallen down the stairs. <laughs> she's not responding to me. She's, okay, she's are you with her now? Yeah. How old is she? She's one. Elsie, Elsie. The court was also presented with text messages where the fitness trainer referred to his adopted daughter as Satan dressed up in a baby grow, a psycho, and the exorcist. In addition, neighbors claimed to have heard Scully Hicks screaming at the baby to shut up. They told the court that the baby would cry often, but not in a way that made them feel they needed to report the parent. 
Elsie was placed with Scully Hicks and his husband, Craig, in September 2015, when she was 10 months old. During the adoption process, the couple was seen as a well-educated and articulate couple who were very well regarded by each of the agencies as good parents who had already successfully adopted. The little girl's biological family has expressed outrage, saying that she would still be alive today if she had not been taken away from them. Cyan O'Brien, Elsie's grandmother, said they were only told about her death eight months after the incident. The toddler, originally named Shayla O'Brien, was removed from her mother in hospital five days after birth. Social services had deemed the mother was not in a position to care for the baby. Her grandmother had started court proceedings in January 2015, but Elsie was put up for adoption in May later that year. Their hopes of a reunion were crushed after her family found out about her death when social services visited the O'Briens in January 2017 to deliver the tragic news. Elsie's adoptive father, Craig Scully Hicks, was also devastated by the murder of his baby daughter at the hands of his husband. Throughout the trial, the 36-year-old broke down in court. He recalled the day his husband called to say their 18-month-old was not well. Craig rushed 100 miles from Leicester, where he was working, to the hospital in Cardiff. On arrival, he found his daughter on the operating table. Doctors told him she had a problem with her heart and they were working on her. He also tearfully told the jury their home was filled with love and he wouldn't have tolerated anything had he suspected it. Regarding the first 999 call where his husband said he had tumbled down the stairs, Craig Scully Hicks wondered if scans had been done whether her murder could have been prevented. According to his testimony, he was unaware of the symptoms he should have been looking for in the child and put most of the signs down to teething and allergies. Once Craig saw the medical evidence in court, he ended his relationship with Matthew. In November 2017, a jury convicted Matthew Scully Hicks of the murder. He was jailed for life with a minimum prison sentence of 18 years. In spite of all the evidence laid out in court and the conviction, Scully Hicks penned a letter from prison adamant he didn't kill the toddler. Friends of the murderer have subsequently set out to raise funds to overturn his conviction. In the letter, he claims Elsie was not a victim and he needed help proving his innocence from prison. Former school friend Hannah Scar says in reality, everyone who has ever met Matthew would only say good things about him. They named the fundraiser the Ship Project. The calls for funding were met with outrage, including comments appealing the justice system to bring back the death penalty, which may be what caused the website to be taken down. For the safety of their second child, only referred to as C, updates were withheld from the media. Seemingly, the child remained with Craig Scully Hicks once he was able to prove to the family court he was unaware of the abuse towards Elsie. In August 2016, William Skip McCullen reported his girlfriend's daughter, Jordan Dumont, missing. In a 911 call, he frantically tells the operator he woke up from a nap and the three-year-old was gone. Gaston County, 911 Reynolds, what's the address of your emergency? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my oldest daughter, I was taking a nap. I just woke up and I can't find her anywhere. I went to the neighbors and they're not home and I don't know where she's at. How old is she? She's about to be four next month. I have a newborn with me too, one, a one-year-old, and I got her, and I can't find my, uh, the other one. I what's really your, need some help right now. Listen, listen to me. What's your address? Best Town Road. Have you looked under the beds and in the closet? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I called her name, though. I can't find her anywhere. I went next door. I, I've been okay. hauling her name outside. Right. I can't find her. She may have fallen asleep. I need you to go look under the beds and stuff while I start people yes. that way, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. All right. And you... Best Town Road? Yes, ma'am. Are you on a mobile phone? Uh, no, ma'am. It's, it's a landline phone, but it's a corded phone. Okay. Well, go ahead and, and take it with you and let's go look under beds. Tell me yeah, your name. It's a, it's a corded, my name is a corded phone. I, I have to put down the phone and go look. Okay. What is your phone number? Um, 70... Yes, ma'am. What is her name? Uh, she was... I, I got it. I'm going to check real quick, okay? Don't hang up, though. Come right no, back to the phone. No, ma'am. Okay. Hello. Oh, you there? She's not here. Okay, well, listen to me. Take a deep breath for me, okay? It's her last name. <laughs> no, ma'am. It's... Okay, what's her date of birth? I, I don't Take a listen. Listen to me. It's the 14th of next month. She'll be... 
before. Uh, my wife's at work. She's about to be home, and I don't know where my daughter is. Is she white female? <laughs> yes, ma'am. She's wearing, she's wearing uh, blue jeans and a long sleeve Mickey Mouse shirt. <laughs> Is she, and, and what color is her hair? <laughs> it's brown, it's blonde. I've got to go next door. I just want to check the neighbor's house. Now, you stay with me for just a minute. I've already got people on the way to me, okay? You said she has light brown hair? <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right, and she was wearing blue jeans and a long sleeve Mickey no, Mouse blue, shirt? Blue short jeans and, and a long sleeve uh, Minnie, Minnie Mouse. Blue jeans, shorts, and a long sleeve Minnie Mouse shirt? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Light brown hair. Yes, um, Baby, please come out. I don't know if she's just hiding or what. I don't know. I can't find it anyway if you don't do this. Okay. Well, the front door was wide open and I can't find it. Okay, listen to it. The front door was open? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <and> I... <laughs> Alright, don't hang the phone up. Go check if you need to. I've got units on the way to you, okay? Okay. Come back to me if you don't get it with an officer. Crews joined by volunteers started searching around the 1900 block of Best Town Road, near Ruthhaven Drive in Bessemer City after the call. Sadly, the body of Jordan Dumont was found about 500 yards from the home the next day. Investigators believed the death happened 24 to 36 hours prior to the discovery. While searching, a detective who walked into nearby woods saw a black cloth sticking out of a hole. As the officer moved closer to the black cloth, he saw a white sock with bright colored stripes and bugs on it. The officer used a stick to poke it, then realized it was her remains. The lifeless body was in a small hole, wrapped up in a black fitted sheet and covered with sticks. The 911 caller, William McCullen, was arrested and charged with first degree murder. Although it was never recorded as to how investigators came to this conclusion, the trial shone a light on the difficult childhood Jordan Dumont lived. In a media briefing after the three-year-old's remains were found, Gaston County Police Chief Joseph Ramey said they'd received 49 calls for service to that home in the past three years, with some of those calls being domestic-related incidents. In addition to that, there were around five welfare cases concerning Jordan and her little sister, Neighbors came forward with multiple stories of McCullen acting violently, sometimes towards the toddler's mother, Jaylene, but also towards the little girl. It was later clarified that 33 of the calls were related to people who lived there before the family, but the timeline leading up to the murder was plagued with abuse nonetheless. One of the calls concerning the children was made while McCullen's sister, Christina, was looking after the two. The next door neighbor told police she was concerned for the kids after an unknown man and Christina started fighting. Officers left the scene finding no issues. A few weeks later, Jordan's biological father, Joshua Kinnett, also called the police because he hadn't heard from the little girl's mother in a while. Still, she told them she didn't want to have any contact with him and they again reported no issues with the children. Four days later, Kinnett received a letter from DHHS informing him their assessment found the children were fine. Furthermore, four days after trial, the father called police again. This time, DHHS recommended McCullen seek a substance abuse assessment and follow through on all clinical advice and that Jaylene Dumont maintains communication with Kinnett. It also recommended the couple ensure their children always have a sober caretaker. The three-year-old's biological father requested another welfare check, and again, no issues were found until the little girl went missing not long after. The accused sister told a news station she was there when the social worker visited, but the family was all questioned in front of McCullen, so she didn't speak up about the abuse she had witnessed. Christina also noted that she had not been approached by the court to testify in her brother's case, but she felt Jordan's mother, Jaylene, should have also been charged. The woman went to the police the morning after the child went missing because her brother had told her he had tried CPR. Given the details in the autopsy report, the toddler was so severely wounded, it wouldn't have helped. The report shows blunt force trauma to her stomach. She was struck so hard she suffered internal bleeding. She had multiple other wounds covering her body, as well as bleeding between the brain and scalp. In 2018, William McCullen was sentenced to life in prison without parole after a jury found him guilty of first-degree murder by torture. 
Last year, Jordan's biological father began a lawsuit to sue the child's mother and former boyfriend. Joshua Kinnett's attorney said regardless of whether they receive money or not, it will send a message to parents that they should protect their children. Kinnett believes Jaylene could have done more and prevented the three-year-old's murder. Additionally, there's a possibility of future charges against DHHS. The social worker involved with the case resigned. That's it for today. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting. And subscribe to join us in the next episode of True 911.